The story of Hercules begins with a love affair between Zeus, the king of the gods, and Alcmene, a mortal woman. Alcmene became pregnant with two sons. One was Hercules, the son of Zeus, and the other was Iphicles, the son of Amphitryon. However, Zeus's wife, Hera, was not happy about this. She hated Hercules and wanted to prevent his birth. She sent two witches to delay Alcmene's delivery, but they were tricked by one of her servants and left the room. Then Hera sent two snakes to kill Hercules in his crib, but the baby was so strong and fearless that he strangled them both. Hercules grew up to be a mighty hero, but Hera never gave up on her revenge. She made him go mad and kill his own wife and children. Hercules was filled with guilt and sorrow and sought the help of Apollo, the god of truth and healing. Apollo told him that he had to perform 12 labors for King Eurystheus, a cousin of Hercules and a puppet of Hera, in order to atone for his sins and achieve immortality. The 12 labors were not easy. They involved slaying or capturing fearsome beasts such as the Nemean lion, the Lernaean hydra, the Erymanthian boar, the Cretan bull, the Stymphalian birds, the Cyrenean hind, they also involved performing impossible tasks, such as cleaning the Augean stables, stealing the girdle of Hippolyta, the queen of the Amazons, obtaining the golden apples of the Hesperides, and bringing back the three-headed dog Cerberus from the underworld. Hercules completed all the twelve labors, but faced many other challenges and adventures along the way. He fought against giants, centaurs, sea monsters, and even gods. He also made many friends and enemies and fathered many children with various women. He was a symbol of strength, courage, and masculinity, but also of human flaws such as anger, pride, and lust. Hercules' death was also tragic. He married a princess named Dianeira, who loved him dearly. However, he was also attracted to a young maiden named Iole and wanted to make her his concubine. Dianeira was jealous and afraid of losing him, so she decided to use a love potion that she had received from a centaur named Nessus, whom Hercules had killed. Nessus had told her that his blood was a powerful aphrodisiac, but he had lied. His blood was actually poisoned with the venom of the Hydra, which Hercules had used to kill him. Deianira soaked a shirt with Nessus' blood and gave it to Hercules, thinking that it would make him love her more. However, as soon as Hercules put on the shirt, he felt terrible pain. The poison burned his skin and flesh, and he could not take off the shirt. He realized that he had been betrayed by Deianira, and he cursed her and Nessus. He tried to find a way to end his suffering, but nothing worked. He finally decided to build a funeral pyre and set himself on fire. As he was dying, he prayed to Zeus to take him to Olympus and make him a god. Zeus heard his plea and agreed. He sent a thunderbolt to consume his mortal body and then took his immortal soul to the home of the gods. There, he was welcomed by his father and his half-brothers and sisters. He also married Habe, the goddess of youth, and became the god of strength and heroes. He finally achieved the glory and peace that he had longed for. This is the end of the story of Hercules, the greatest hero of Greek mythology. He was a demigod, a son of a god and a mortal who had both divine and human qualities. He had incredible powers, such as super strength, endurance, and resistance to injury. He also had a noble and generous heart and a sense of justice and honor. He helped many people and fought against evil. However, he also had weaknesses such as anger, pride, and lust. He made many mistakes and suffered many hardships. He was a hero, but also a human. I hope you liked this story and learned something new. Thank you for watching and see you next time.